Hey everybody, Comic Crack, back with another video. So, keeping with the theme of talking about underground alternative press, small press stuff, uh, I have a little bit of a haul to show you, just a couple of books, and I wanted to talk a bit about a, an artist named Will Sweeney. Um, but we'll start with a little bit of a haul first. Seth Fisher, in the last haul video that I had, uh, you saw some Will World, Green Lantern, Flash, uh, Batman, etc. Um, and then the thing from Heavy Metal. He also did two issues of Doom Patrol. Uh, the series December 2002 was this issue, and January 2003 is issue number 14. So these are the only two. They seem to be a standalone story. I've never read any Doom Patrol. Uh, I've never read this particular volume. I've never read the early stuff, so I don't know much about the characters, but the focus for me was obviously the artist, so um, it's, it seems standalone. I read this first issue. Uh, Dave Stevens does the coloring on this one. Uh, John Arcudi is the writer, so there's kind of a look at the first page there. And um, Again, keeping with his theme of taking his characters into another world, <coughs> the humans that are with this robot, they get transported. There's some sort of trigger. Uh, I don't know if it's... Yeah, it's a phrase. Sorrow calls no time that's gone. And that seems to trigger this shift. Uh, the robot's mind opens up and his brain flops out. And uh, all of a sudden, everybody is in the bodies of the original Doom Patrol. Um, so then they spend the rest of the issue figuring out what the hell is going on. So, you know, he definitely seems to... I don't know if he chooses the projects based on what the theme of the writing is, or if he has that much influence with the writer that he talks about certain things that are interesting to him. Because, I mean, Flash, that one-off, he went into the future... So he's kind of uh, out of out of place. Um, the Green Lantern one, he gets propelled into this uh, surrealistic kind of dream world where a lot of crazy shit happens, and then it gives him a chance to draw everybody with kind of stunned looks on their faces, which seems to be another theme in his work. Um, so I'll show you another. Let's go to the last page here. And then yet another thing that is coming up that we've seen in, uh, well, in the Fantastic Four and Iron Man, they also, they go to Japan, so they're kind of out of their element there as well, too, and then dealing with giant monsters, which looks like there's some giant creatures that make an appearance in this as well. Uh, I've just read this first one, and then here's number 14. Here's the second part of his uh, story. And in this one, there's more giant creatures. Let's find a good page. There we go. There's a good page of some giant monsters fighting and getting their heads knocked off. So, yeah, pretty excited. I'd been looking for these for quite a while. Um, the shop, actually, and the funny thing is, it's it was the shop across the road from me that I eventually found them, uh, which was very surprising to me. He, he seems to be getting in a lot more uh, new back issues, though, because I've noticed over the past month his back issue bins have really kind of changed and things have been swapped out and sold off and new things have been brought in so maybe he just kind of came across a collection that he's recently bought so anyway very very cool love Seth Fisher um, I know I've kind of sparked some interest in a couple of guys with the last video so uh, hopefully everybody has just as much luck hunting this stuff down um, as you know, I work in film here in Winnipeg. I think I said that in a video previously. The rental house in town that we get all our gear from, the lighting gear and the grip gear and stuff, uh, is is William F. White. And I also used to work in that shop. Um, they have businesses across Canada. And I think a couple in other countries as well, too. Uh, one of the guys that works in the shop, who's a pretty good friend of mine, he went to visit his family in Halifax, in Halifax is where they filmed Hobo with the Shotgun and they rented all their gear for the movie from William F. White so when he was there they had a couple of uh, free 
comic still lying around from this, so he snagged one for me and brought it back, uh, which is very cool. Half of the stories are written by Dave Howlett, um, Josh Rogers, Patrick, Burgomaster, Sean McLeod. Uh, the only name I recognize is Dave Howlett. Now, I haven't seen the movie. Um, I did see the Tarantino Robert Rodriguez double feature, The Grindhouse, where they had the fake trailer for it. But um, I haven't seen the actual Hobo with the Shotgun yet, and I probably should see it. It's probably right up my alley. So here's a kind of look at some of this. And then black and white story as well. So this will be cool. I just I was just uh, there today to drop off some gear, and I saw him, and he had it for me. So I haven't had a chance to read through it or anything yet. So that'll be very cool. It's very nice of him to bring that for me. Um, and then on my way back from there, I went back to the chapters to look for some more no-brow press stuff, uh, which I believe I showed off in a previous video. Um, yeah, I think it was in one of the haul videos, wasn't it? I, I, you know, it's funny. I don't remember. I, I have a lot of stuff. I film a lot of stuff and just kind of archive it. And then when I get a chance, I, up, I pick and choose which one I'm going to upload next. Uh, so I just uploaded a couple of the haul videos yesterday. So to be honest, I can't remember exactly what was in there. I think that there was some no-brow. Anyway, I guess somebody else has discovered it. Uh, because most of it was gone. There was a couple of things left. So I picked up to um, this by a guy named Ben Newman. Bit of a wraparound cover there. And the interiors are similar. A uh, wordless story this time. Um, but as usual, done with the same amazing quality that uh, I've seen in the other no brow stuff. I, I love this company. I, I spend. Uh, I spent about an hour yesterday just browsing through their site and looking at everything that they've done and, you know, making kind of wish lists because, again, it's it's a bit expensive and since it's based out of the UK that the uh, shipping to get it over to me is a, is a bit of money. But there's a couple of things I have bookmarked that I'm going to be picking up from them, including uh, they've got a section where they, they sell prints. So I'm going to be picking up probably one or two prints from them as well in the future. Uh, so that's that one. And the other no-brow press is by a guy named Jack Teagle. The first time I discovered this and bought some stuff there, they had issue one and two of this, but going back, they only had issue one, so I snagged it while I could. Uh, fight. And the back cover there. And the interiors of this one are black and white, but it still looks like it's going to be a great one. And same thing, great paper quality and... Uh, looks like a kind of fun story, this one, about two wrestlers. One wrestler who's always playing the bad guy, the guy with the devil horns, and he's just getting sick and tired of getting beaten all the time, so he wants to make the shift to being a good guy wrestler. So it'll be kind of kind of interesting. So yeah, no brow press. I'll make sure that I put links uh, in this video, if I haven't before, um, where you can find all this stuff and have a look for yourself. Alright, so now on to the... A big time one. So, Will Sweeney is an artist that I've discovered. I don't quite know how I, I stumbled upon his name. Um, first thing I saw, though, was a music video that he did for a band called Birdie Nam Nam. And the music video was called, uh, for the song Parachute Ending, I think it was called. Um, it's on YouTube, and it just blew me away the first time I saw it. I, I showed a couple other friends of mine who were kind of artists and things, and instantly it just was a hit, you know, like... His style is fantastic. The music video itself, like the song, is actually pretty decent as well. Um, but the video is super reminiscent of like the animated heavy metal to me in my mind. Like it seems like the natural progression of heavy metal. If if that magazine was still kind of, I'm mean, I'm not saying that it's maybe not as groundbreaking now, but I'm sure that they they do include some things. But this really seems like a progression rather than kind of an homage to a certain style because he really has his own unique style but I mean it's an alien in this in this planet goes in receives this medicine or something that makes his arms go all psychedelic and he has this kind of mind expansion he flies up into space to battle these big statue type figures that are hurtling um, 
uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know if they're like seed pods or whatever at the earth, and he kind of overtakes that with nature, and he kind of floats back down to earth in this kind of zen-like trance, and everything becomes green again around him instead of dead and dying. Um, amazing. Really, really amazing. So for years, I've, I've bookmarked his Alakazam, and I kind of check up on it every once in a while, and have always wanted to order the comics that he has there. Uh, finally just did it now that I've ordered a couple things online and feel a little more comfortable with ordering comics online. I did it and sent him some money and uh, they came. So Amos Novelties Limited uh, out of London. This first issue, this is issue number two. Issue number one is um, out of print. He doesn't have any available on his website. Um, I've done a, a small, small bit of searching to see if I can stumble across it, even on like eBay. I haven't had any hits yet, but like I said, I, I didn't really spend a lot of time, so I'm hoping to spend a bit more time and actually find some stuff, because I would love to see the first one. Uh, there's a hot dog character named Helmet, a sandwich character named Slingsby, and an ogre-ish type king named Rumpus, who's also on the back cover there, Rumpus. Um, but I mean, as you can see by the interiors, there's a his his color palette really is the same across the board when he's doing art. What I've from what I've noticed, um, I love his character design and things like on the front. He mixes some photography in as well that he manipulates in colors and then overlays his uh, um, art on top of it to push the story through. And there's kind of the last page. I hope hopefully you can see that a little bit. I'll try to bring it a little closer. Love it. So one of the other sites that I've just recently discovered is, I think it's BigActive.com. Again, I'll put a link. And it has uh, links to a bunch of different artists, but they do have a Will Sweeney. And when you go to his page, it breaks down the formats, like whether it's art books or advertising or music videos or whatever, or record covers and things. And you can go through the links there. He's also done videos for Yo Gabba Gabba. So it has links to all the videos, so you can see all his animated work. Really, really worth checking out. Um, and then here is Tales from Green Fuzz, number three, again by Amos Novelties. And this one was 2009, so number two came out in 2006. This one came out in 2009, so obviously this isn't a high priority. It's, it seems like it's just something he does for fun. And when an issue is finished, um, he puts it out. And there's a look at the interiors there. So kind of this fantasy-ish type world. Um, a little silly, but not overly silly. You know what I mean? It's a, There's a fine line with that kind of stuff. Um, there's still a, a sort of serious-ish plot. I mean, as serious as you can get with characters that their heads are pieces of broccoli and strawberries and sandwiches and things. But... Um, Still really enjoyable. I've just read issue number two. I haven't had a chance to read this one yet. But I think as I've said early, early on in my video making career, um, art speaks a lot louder to me than stories sometimes. Um, now, that's sort of changing because I do find I, I'm really enjoying some of the new Marvel Now stuff. And while the art definitely is a draw, the story is what's really keeping me interested in a lot of it. But when it comes to something like this, I, I don't mind a little bit of silliness because they're fucking beautiful comics. So there you go, Will Sweeney. And then the third thing that I got from him um, was a newer publication. Um, Captain Mind's Eye, Hands of Forlock in dub. And this is self-published by Alakazam and something else called Neves, N-I-E-V-E-S. And it does say, yeah, first edition, and it is 2012. So, this is a collection of just art pieces. Um, there's some mixed media things here. I'll just start at the beginning and I'll show you some. There's some mixed media things where he does mix in photography, like on this one, and just mess with the colors, and then just some straight art. Uh, so they're all just kind of one-page spreads. Um, again, some great quality paper. Same with, uh, very similar to the No Brow stuff as well. Which I guess makes sense since they're all based out of the UK. 
so maybe there's some, maybe I just haven't discovered it yet, but maybe there's some connection between the two of them. Uh, let's show you a couple more pages here. Absolutely love this stuff. I think he has some prints available as well. I, I've been looking at a few sites, some of these comic sites that I've been looking at lately, No Brow especially, they have prints for sale. Um, I actually discovered a site, this is kind of off topic a little bit, uh, discovered a site that has some shaky cane prints for sale and one of them is kind of a, a, a black light version of a poster from uh, uh, Bulletproof Coffin that I'm seriously considering getting. It's pretty pricey, but, it, you know, I'd, I'd like to get into getting some more art because I love having my posters up in, in the frames and things. And some of these artists that I really, really love it would be awesome to support them in that way too and uh, get an original piece of signed art from them. So, yeah, that's that one. I'll show you one more page. What the hell? Yeah, it's his really has his own, his own sense of style and like I said while it is kind of reminiscent of some European heavy metal type stuff he's, he still has his own thing going on um, that I just I love so there you go Will Sweeney I'll throw in a bunch of links don't know when this video will get uploaded I'm gonna try to do it tonight so hopefully y'all can see this tonight after posting the hauls that I did yesterday don't know why the fuck I just said y'all there but I don't know anyway um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Comment away. Um, I'm kind of liking doing this style of format. I'm probably going to take a little bit of a break from talking about, like, the Marvel and DC stuff. I'd like to focus on the small press stuff. I've, I've The other day I, I ordered again from Wow Cool Comics, which I know that name doesn't mean anything to you now, but one of the videos that I'm going to post, you'll see an order that I got from them, and I was super impressed with everything about them, and their site is just so amazing. I ordered some more stuff. So I'm hoping to go into a little more detail with a lot of this stuff too. Um, but I just want to just kind of talk about it and show it off and maybe spark some interest. Uh, I know that uh, I think it's Big Time Comics. Sorry if I've gotten the username wrong. And uh, Spyro, Spiro, Spyro Harvey, Spyro.geek um, have commented on a couple of these. So I'm hoping to open up the floor to more videos where we can talk a little bit about uh, alternative comics and things like that. Um, that's maybe not like image and things related. I also have the um, the Canadian focus coming up real soon. All those videos are shot and again archived. Uh, just waiting for a big chunk of time where I can maybe post one of those every couple of days. Um, so yeah, we'll get a nice look in the next few months of uh, a lot of alternative titles for you guys. Thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see y'all soon.